Hi everyone, it's Nicole here today for Pretty Pink Posh and I'm showcasing the Stitched Duo 3 die here. This is a great die that is a tag shape and then it has the window cut out that goes inside. To start my card, I am going to be die cutting this pink heart background paper. This is some pattern paper from Doodlebug and I'm going to use the die and die cut just the outside of the frame. I probably could have done both of them at the same time, but I kind of thought I might go a different direction. So I just cut the tag first, and then I'm going to cut the tag from another piece of paper, and I cut the windows out of the dark pink tag at the same time. Then this pattern paper with the clouds and the little falling hearts will be the background part of my shaker card. I will also need a transparency cut in the same shape as the tag. That's going to be the window portion of the shaker that holds everything in place. I'm going to stamp a greeting using the Simon Says Stamp Sending and Wishing stamp set. And I'm going to stamp that with some Versamark ink right above the window opening on the front of the shaker tag. And then I'll use another little greeting from the same stamp set right underneath that, also stamped with Versamark. Then I'll use the Simon Says Stamp Fine White Embossing Powder, tap off all of that excess, and then I'll heat set that. For the background of my card, I am using the Lawn Fawn A2 size stitched rectangle from the large stitched rectangle die collection. And I'm going to die cut that from some white wood grain paper. This is also doodle bug paper. I love that this is the same size as the front of a standard A2 card. Next I'm going to die or stamp rather this cute monster out of a mail hanging out of a mailbox from the Simon Says Stamp Monster Hug stamp set. This is brand new from their Better Together stamp release, stamp and die release. I'm going to also stamp several of the letters and envelopes here from the same stamp set. And then I'm going to color everything in with Copic markers. Now I'm only showing coloring the one monster. I did end up using two monsters and I colored the other one pretty much exactly the same with pinks and things so I just left that portion out. After I got most of my card put together I realized I really thought I needed two monsters. They're just so cute. I think they're really really fun. I colored in the post there for the mailbox with about three shades of brown and then I'm coloring in the mailbox with some reds. The thing about reds is if you saturate the paper too much with these Copic alcohol ink markers, they will tend to bleed, I found. And they did bleed a little bit, but luckily I was able to salvage the project because they bled into the mailbox flag, which I was coloring dark gray anyway, so I could kind of disguise that. And a little of it maybe bled into part of the monster, I think. But... <laughs> Luckily, I was using pinks for the monster, and so a lot of that kind of blended out. If I had been using another color, it might not have worked out, and I may had may have had to redo the project. It's usually a good idea to maybe let the project sit for a minute or two uh, and work on another part of coloring the image when you're using reds and even pinks. Sometimes they just really like to bleed. I'm using about three shades of pink for the monster now. I kept it kind of to Valentine's type colors. I think it would be cute in almost any color that you can think of. And then I'm doing one of my favorite techniques using or adding little dot detail with my markers. And I usually start with my darkest color and then kind of work my way out to my mid-tone and lightest color even if I want to. I'm going to go ahead and go over that mailbox now with some grays, and that really disguises any of that red Copic marker bleed that I had going on there. Instead of keeping the eyes stark white, I did add some cool gray with the C00 and C1 markers. Colored in the monster's fingernails a little darker. And then I will die cut him and add some of the silly eyes from... Pretty Pink Posh in the 4 millimeter size right to the pupil part of his eyes. I'm going to take that coordinating die now and die cut him. 
And then that dark part of the mailbox didn't stamp as dark as I wanted it to, so I went ahead and went in with a dark cool gray marker and added some color and just darkened that up. And there I glued his little eyes in place. Now I did decide later that I kind of wished I'd had had added glossy accents to the whole eye and that really would have secured the eyes just fine. So for the other monster I actually added glossy accents to the whole eye and then put the wiggle eyes there in place. Now I did go ahead and die cut my letters first which I generally don't do. I usually color and then die cut but I was kind of positioning them. You can see a couple of them back behind the window there, trying to figure out the best layout for all of my elements here on my card. So I went ahead and die cut them first, and now I'm just coloring them in with shades of pinks and reds, similar to the ones I used for the monster, and to coordinate with the rest of my card. Really, really simple, quick coloring. I didn't spend a ton of time on these letters at all. Once those are all colored in, I can go ahead and adhere those back behind the window portion of my shaker. Two of them are going to be inside of the shaker, and then the third one is going to be outside the shaker next to that mailbox post with the monster hanging out of it. Really fun card. I think this would be great for any little ones or even, even the big ones that you might have a Valentine's card to send to. Um, those monsters are really, really fun. And the shaker portion of it really makes a fun, interactive type of card. Once I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and add that glossy accents to the rest of his eyes. I just, I like how it adds additional dimension, especially since I didn't use wiggle eyes that are really, really big to cover the entire eye. I added some glossy accents to his little monster nails there too. I'm going to set him aside to dry while I work on putting together the shaker portion of my card. You can see the transparency die cut there that goes behind that. I'm going to take some skinny, strong adhesive and place it all the way around my tag, and then I can secure my transparency to the back of this before I add the foam adhesive. So peel all the backing off. A lot of times I use other adhesive and sometimes it can kind of, um, you can see it on the front, even the dot adhesive sometimes kind of wraps around to the front. This skinny adhesive works really well. This is my first time using that for a shaker card and I really like how it worked. It worked really nicely. Now you can see that I'm going to have to cut my foam adhesive down really thin to fit around the outside of my shaker and I need it to butt up next to each other really tightly so none of the shaker material comes out, especially because I'm going to be filling my shaker this time with the Silver Shimmer Sea Beads from Pretty Pink Posh as well as the Silver Heart Confetti. And the beads tend, if there is any little hole at all, they will find a way to escape. So I want to make sure that I have my adhesive really close to each other. I'm going to draw a little hole where I want to add, or draw a little X rather, where I want to add a hole with my corner chomper for my tag so I can thread some twine through here in a little bit. And then I'm going to use some glue dots to attach two of those envelopes or letters there to the inside of my shaker before I add the shaker material. And then I'm going to use the Silver Heart Confetti, and I got a little too much, so I'll just shake some of that out and put it back. And then I will use the Silver Shimmer Seed Beads as well. And I love, love the movement that the seed beads add. I'll pull all the backing paper off of my foam adhesive, and then I can take the background of my tag and take that to the shaker portion and secure it really good flip it over and you can really see those seed beads moving. I can go ahead and decorate the front of the shaker now. I'm going to take my monster and attach him with some glue dots. Make sure I get some good adhesive there so he stays put. And I'm going to tuck that unfinished end of the mailbox post underneath the edge of the shaker window. It gives it a little bit nicer, cleaner look. And then 
I will take that last remaining envelope and attach it as well. I'll thread some of the hot pink Pretty Pink Posh Twine through the top of my tag. I'm going to just double it over, push both of those, or push that loop through, just trim that there, and then I'll take the two unfinished ends and pull them through that loop, and just kind of leave those ends as they are. Now here's that last monster, monster that I was talking about, and for him I'm going to go ahead and add my glossy accents first. And then I'm using two different sized eyes for him, which is a fun thing to do when you have kind of a whimsical image like these monsters. I'm using both the medium and the small silly eyes from Pretty Pink Posh, and I can set that aside to dry for a little bit. Now I had a bunch of leftover hearts from my other card that I created using the Peekaboo Pretty Pink Posh die. And so since I'm using a lot of the same or similar colors for this card, I went ahead and used some of those hearts on my card here. And I'm just going to secure them here and there and then use, a, use some of the glossy accents on top of those to create some dimensional heart embellishments. I'm going to even add one of the hearts to that monster down there. I thought that was a fun little addition. So once I have all of my elements in place and the glossy accents on my hearts has dried, I can secure this panel to a card base and this card is finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing the brand new Stitched Duo 3 die from Pretty Pink Posh. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.